So what I'm asking for is an investment of $40,000. As far as wholesaling experience up until this point, it's zero, right? How are you going to take advantage of the wholesale market that's already pretty flooded? I haven't really talked to Matt or anyone about this. In this scenario, I feel like I may have to put the money in a duffel bag and drop it behind the dumpster. Sell it a dream. I think you can probably do it, but 10% uh, is uh, probably not what's going to get it done. Three investors, Ben Mirzan, Matt McKeever, and our guest investor will watch as entrepreneurs present their deals with only one chance to make the pitch. Brought to you by Cashflow Tribe. Today, I'm asking you investors for $1 million. You're asking for a million bucks. That's a big ask. Right off the bat, that is a huge ask. Your ask of $1 million doesn't scare me. I don't know if the numbers are adding up for me, man. I like the creativity behind the idea of giving us 10% equity in the deals you do. But I think that even that sort of language is a bit convoluted. I will refuse to invest in someone that refuses to invest in themselves. to the point. What we would like to do is to present you with an opportunity to earn over 21% ROI. Anybody can buy a duplex. It takes a special person to take that duplex and turn it into a business. Tying up money for two years for the sort of upside that we're looking at um, just doesn't really fit within my personal investing. Well, like, let's not be greedy, guys. There's still a lot of speculation for me. And I, if I'm going to speculate, I might as well put my money in the stock market. Okay, just one at a time. Not necessarily. Just reflecting back on the last deal that you were you were attempting to fund there with Matt, where there was absolutely no solid asset at all. It was just on the hopes that someone's marketing is going to pay off. 
if you would have had one more slide, you'd have lost me. I'm gonna disagree a little bit. I cannot see that happening. Don't let the pitch make you a little. B <laughs> come on, man. When you come to the pitch, man, be ready. You are on the clock, five minutes. Let's go! Today, I'm asking you investors for $1 million. For $100,000. $146,000. I'm asking for $300,000. You're asking for a million bucks. That's a big ask. For me, I do have concerns. I'm a very nice guy until you ask me for money. Do you have an opportunity to play a bigger league? That takes guts, that takes balls. You don't ask, you don't get. I got to know in the next 30 seconds, and I'm not partnering with anybody else on this deal. But you're getting a great deal, in my opinion. Today, I'm going to go with my gut and, and choose. This property that we're taking a look at, um, it's got an ARV of 165, and our comp is extremely solid, double verified by both me as well as a contractor. I'm honestly lost as to what we're, we would be talking about. Is that a question? or? If it doesn't make sense in the first two minutes, it's probably not a good deal for me. What I'm really interested in doing is getting more people into the Sault Ste. Marie market. No, I'm pretty sure he's looking for 100% financing. You actually brought too much creativity, which is rare for me to say. Can I respond or let's say we come in under ARV, which I really don't think we're going to. The fast nickel beat the slow dime, dude. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got the already, man. So I'm actually giving you a better deal. Do you want to take it? <laughs>
what I'm asking for is an investment of $40,000. As far as wholesaling experience up until this point, it's zero, right? How are you going to take advantage of the wholesale market that's already pretty flooded? I haven't really talked to Matt or anyone about this. In this scenario, I feel like I may have to put the money in a duffel bag and drop it behind a dumpster. Sell the dream, I think you can probably do it, but 10% uh, is uh, probably not what's going to get done. Bada, 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 so wing, bada, what is going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Pitch. Peter, the producer here. If you guys are excited for tonight's show, I know I am excited. I am amped up. We have a great, amazing show here for you tonight. I would love to see us blow up this chat with some fire emojis. Let's get the investors, let's get our guest pitchers hyped up for tonight. So if you guys are excited for tonight's show, let's see all the fire emojis just blowing up the chat. Let's see it going nuts. And again, today we have an epic new show ready here for you today, guys. So uh, if you guys aren't aware, the pitch is an amazing opportunity for investors to pitch their deals for real money. This is live. This is not scripted. Everything's live to go here. I can tell you from my own personal experience, everything is live right now. The investors have no idea what is about to happen, what is about to go on. Thank you everyone for dropping some fire emojis. I'm seeing the private chat as well too, back here backstage and uh, in the dugout right now and everyone is excited. So if you can see, I'm actually hanging out here in the dugout right now. And the dugout is an amazing, uh, sh uh, addition that we do here on the show to come hang out after the show with the investors and with the guest pitchers to see how the deals go on after the show. We've seen Dragon's Den, we've seen Shark's Tank, and once the deal's done, you don't really know what's going on. But we want to be as real as possible here. So if you guys are interested, come hang out in the dugout after the show. And this is the opportunity to have a seat at the table, to hear the discussions that go on after the deal has been pitched and after the negotiations have been made there's more things that go on after because to put these deals together there's a lot that still goes on so if you're new to real estate this is an amazing opportunity to actually see how deals get formulated so this opportunity is only available to cash flow tribe premium members so if you are part of cash flow tribe premium you guys know what to do. You're going to be getting a link at the end of this show in the events section on the website. So make sure to head over there after. And if you're new, you never uh, join Cashflow Tribe, I really suggest joining because it is an amazing community of real estate investors that we're growing across Canada. And actually, right now, we have just hit 2,500 members. So let's give a big round of applause to Cashflow Tribe, to Matt and Ben for creating this amazing community and we just hit 2500 members so we just want to take a quick second here and say thank you to all the people who have joined over the last week this community is growing so fast and it's amazing to see how many people are leveling up with this community here so i might uh i might not be the best with some of these names but i'm gonna do my best here so we have pranaj Macbool, david we have diana we have jack gelbert david wellen uh, Emily Paul, Austin Withers, Iram Doyle, Daryl Allen, Ken Nufonte, I believe that is, Josh Taylor, Ala, Lady Gina, uh, Lucas Keating. I'm trying my best to you guys. I apologize. Miguel Umina. We have Bill Bone. We have Terry Venturino. We have Chris Cole, Chris REI, Teresa Perez. And this is just a few of the amazing people who have joined this growing community over the last uh, few days to a week here. We have Teresa Perez, Zubair, Korshid, uh, Cyrus, uh, Robert, Mo, Carrie, Sky, James, Lauren, Gina, Lakisha, Alex, 
Nok, Chloe, Hamid, Matt, and Connor. Again, these are just a few of the people who have joined over the last week and have joined this amazing community that would not be possible without Matt, would not be possible without Ben. And we just want to say thank you. So again, let's blow up this chat with a bunch of fire emojis. And before we begin here, I want to show you guys a little bit of the amazing features that we have on the website here. So did you know that Cashflow Tribe has some of the most robust online real estate calculators out there? Yeah, there have some amazing calculators that are for free here on the on the website. You don't need the premium account. You can do this with a free membership and the uh, features get better. Like you can save your calculators after with the premium program. But if you're looking to get into real estate or if you are in real estate, you will I know for a fact, I know, I know a bunch of real estate investors greatly benefit from these online calculators. We have a purchase and closing cost calculator. We have a CMHC calculator, land transfer tax calculator, mortgage calculator, wholesale max allowable offer calculator. I'm not going to read through them all. They got so many calculators here. And this, these are calculators created for real estate investors by real estate investors. Matt and Ben, took everything that they've gone through, the experiences that they've had, and they've built them into these calculators. So if you're not part of Cashflow Tribe, I really suggest it because there's some amazing free tools that are built in this website for you. And again, if you want to have a seat at the table after the show, if you want to see how the deals go down after the show's all done and hear the talks that actually happen, join me and the investors and the guest pitchers that you're going to see on tonight's show in the dugout again you can see at the banner scrolling across the screen here this feature is only available to cashflow tribe premium members but this is some of the perks that you get with being a premium member with cashflow tribe in this amazing community so without further ado we're going to get into things i'm going to bring daniel on here and he's going to get the show going so once again thank you guys so much for being here we really appreciate you all let's keep blowing up that chat with a bunch of fire emojis i love to see it and uh let's get this show started. Warning, all lenders are professional Canadian real estate investors who invest their own money into these deals. Every pitch is made cold and every lender will make offers at their own risk. Three investors, Ben Mirzan, Matt McKeever, and our guest investor will watch as entrepreneurs present their deals with only one chance to make the pitch. Brought to you by Cashflow Tribe. Okay, okay, okay. What is going on, everybody? I hope you're doing well from the East Coast to the West Coast. I'm excited because I am here to bring you another episode of The Pitch brought to you by Cashflow Tribe, Canada's number one real estate community. Listen, I'm your host, Daniel Blagrove, and this is the show. Just like Peter, the producer mentioned, this is where investors will make a pitch to potential money partners for a chance to raise capital for their real estate investments. Listen, I know that some of you have been here before, but maybe some of you are new. I want you to drop your names and your city in the comments. Say what's up. Drop some fire emojis. I need to know who I'm talking to. I'm so excited because I got some special guests. I got a guest investor. I got a guest judge. I'm so ready to hear, to, to just understand what it looks like to do deals. We're not just talking about trading pennies or talking about bartering a pencil for a car. We're talking about doing deals, y'all, doing real deals with real money, with real real estate being traded. And so I want to just encourage you to really engage. Come on and let us hear your voice. I want to know what your thoughts are. If this is a good deal, would you take the deal? Would you lend the money? Do you like the deal? And what would you learn? How did you become better as a result? So if you're looking for reg for education and information for all things real estate investing, I want to you to I want to encourage you to check out Cashflow Tribe. Listen, this is the pitch. All right. This is where people are going to pitch their deals. But here's my pitch to you. I want you to check out Cashflow Tribe, because if you're looking to get more information and knowledge and understanding what it looks like to become a real, a real estate investor, to take down deals, to scale maybe a business, to reach financial freedom. 
Whatever your goals are, we want to get alongside you and help you get there because who you're about to see on the show are several examples of people who use real estate as the means to financial freedom. And so here's my pitch. If you are just new and have never heard of us before, I want you to go to cashflowtribepitch.com. That's cashflowtribepitch.com. Go there, grab a free account. And for grabbing a free account, I want to put you in a draw today. Only for those who are watching the show live today, I will put you in a draw to give you a hundred bucks cash. And I'm going to send it right over to you as a result of signing up for a free account. Guys, I want to, I want to congratulate Cash for Tribe because we just passed 2,500 members, y'all. 2,500. That's what I'm talking about. And so I want you to get on, on the party. I want you to be a part. So grab a free account. And oh, and you know what? I'm, I'm in a good mood. The first person who signs up, the early bird gets the worm. The first person who signs up, I'm giving 50 bucks cash. 50 bucks for the first person who signs up, 100 for, for the group who will sign up today. So let's get it going. All right. So listen, I want to get out of the way. I want to go ahead and introduce the judges on the show today. We got a special guest. It's his first time on. You may know him. You may not, but I'm about to bring him on. Listen, he was an expert joint venture strategist with a wealth of experience in finding off-market private deals, flipping, renovating, and managing the bottom line. He's still the expert and still actively does this, being focused on cost control, maximizing returns on investment. He started from humble beginnings. He bought his first property at 19 years old and built his portfolio up to 17 properties by the age of 24 using the Burr uh, Burr method, which is called the buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat to scale to 17 properties. He retired as a result in 2017 and believes that anyone, that includes you, anyone can unlock FIRE, which is an acronym that stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And that building wealth is very simple. All you need to do is spend less, earn more, and maximize the returns on the difference between the two. He is Canada's youngest early retiree, an Ivy business graduate, YouTube social media influencer, entrepreneur, stock, and real estate investor from London, Ontario. Please welcome Mike Rosehart. What's up, my man? Hey, thanks for having me on. Come on, it's a pleasure to have you. Are you ready to rock and roll? Let's do it. Yes, sir. All right. Without further ado, I got to bring on my mans. His, I got to start with the first one. You may not know who he is, but he goes by the humble CEO, doing business locally, doing business virtually, doing business on the road. You know him. You love him. I bring you the humble CEO, Ben Mirzen. Yo, good afternoon and welcome, welcome. I'm here, Daniel. Let's go. I got some money ready to spend it today, my man. An immigrant from Romania, Ben Mirzan escaped communism and became Southwestern Ontario's largest single family investor. Ben has done almost 300 deals in Canada, becoming a multimillionaire by the age of 30, and is the CEO of Cashflow Tribe, who has a passion for helping others reach their true potential. Come on, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. So we got one more person to bring on. You may not know him. You may know him, but he got over 70,000 subscribers on YouTube, taking his members to the moon. Let's do it for Matt McKeever. Awesome. Thanks, Daniel. Appreciate the introduction and excited to uh, see some deals tonight. Achieving financial independence and quitting his day job at the age of 31, Serial entrepreneur and angel investor Matt McKeever is Canada's leading real estate investor on YouTube. With a portfolio of over 150 units, Matt shares his wisdom with his growing following of over 70,000 subscribers and over 4.5 million views. That's what's up. All right, all right, Matt. Mike, Ben, are you ready? Because we're about to bring you two pitches tonight who's going to throw some fastballs, maybe some curveballs, but a ball nonetheless. And so we're going to see which one of y'all is going to swing tonight. But before we do, guys, in the comments, I need y'all to let me know. Do you think we're going to get two deals done tonight? One deal done tonight? Any deals done tonight? Come on, I need to know so we can understand. And also, let me know where you're tuning in from. I got to get an understanding of where we're all coming from. I know we got people from Montreal, people from Moncton, New Brunswick, people from Vancouver, from East Coast to West Coast. 
We got to get it going, baby. Okay, okay. I got to keep myself calm here because I get to get on the first pitcher. Come on. Ottawa is in the house. What's up, Phil Clark? Good to see your comment, man. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Our first pitcher was born in India. She came from Canada 20 years ago to go to school. She ended up dropping out and did IT network analyzing for over 10 years until she realized, man, this life ain't for me. So she bought her first property in 2009. Fast forward in 20,000, 20, 20, in 2018, she connected with Ben and started full-time wholesaling where people now call her the wholesaling queen. She got 14 doors with 20 wholesale deals completed. Please welcome Harvinder Grewal. Hi, Daniel. Thank you very much. What a great introduction. Hi, Ben. Hey, Hi, Matt. Hey. Hi, Mike. Thank you for having me here. I'm very excited. Oh, Harvinder, the pleasure is all mine. I'm so ready because we at home want to hear from you. The floor is going to be yours, but I want to break it down real quick. You got five minutes uninterrupted where you can make your pitch to Mike, to Ben, to Matt for a chance to grab a deal. The floor is yours in three, two, one. Go. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. So as everybody knows that I am a wholesaler. So today I'm going to pitch you a wholesaling deal. Um, so I have um, a triplex under contracts in Penbrook. Is a triplex can be converted in fourplex and the asking price, including a wholesaling fee is 265, 200,065, 265. Um, so I'm going to run some numbers here. Um, so second on a slide is, so it's a triplex, three bedroom, three washroom. Every unit has one bedroom, one washroom. And all the units have their separate meters and it's a potential for the fourth unit. Fourth unit also have, it's not done yet, but you can make the fourth unit. It's also have a separate meter, separate entrance, plumbing, plumbing um, electrical done roughly there. And uh, also tenant space, their own hydro on heat. This property has separate meters. Right now it's cash flowing is $400, uh, $400 a month after all the expenses. Another slide, please. Um, I'll run all the numbers for you. So purchase price is 265, including wholesaling fee. Um, if you do renovation, it can increase the rent. And, and if you wanna add another unit only, renovation cost is required 13,000. Uh, closing cost is 2500 plus 1500 lawyer fee. Right now, unit one is giving $700 rent, which can be increased after renovation 950. Unit two is rented for 675. Again, you can increase the rent for 950. Unit third is rented for 675 as well, and potential for unit four, which is 750. Heat tenants are paying, electrical tenants are paying, uh, water is 233. Property tax is 266 a month. Uh, insurance is 141. Um, repair and everything is uh, 102. Vacancy rate is 102. So total income for the month is $2,000. And expenses are 1629. It's cash flowing 420 as it is at this moment. And um, annual income is 547, $5,047. And cap rate is 5.45. Your ROI will be 27%. In the future, if you do renovation, it will income will be um, 3,600. Total expenses will be 1,800, and it will cash flow 1,800 a month. Annual will be annual income will be 21,625. So just as, right now, as it is, you can get $400 a month cash flowing for price of 265 only. Who wants to buy this deal from me? Come on, Harvinder. That's what I'm talking about. Great job with the presentation. But first, I need to know, y'all, what do you think? Are you ready to do a deal? Would you take it? If you got the cash, would you be spending it tonight? I got to know. But before we do, check this out. We will be right back after these words from Cashflow Tribe.
Come on, y'all. Welcome back to The Pitch, brought to you by Cashflow Tribe, Canada's number one real estate investing community. Listen, I do want to make mention that with this deal going down, we still got another one going. And this is great because it gives you an understanding of what it looks like to have conversations, to negotiate, to ask the right questions, to have the right answers, mm -hmm. and to strike deals. Whether or not we do see or see deals happen tonight, I want you to hang out with us in the dugout. This is a Zoom call where we get to connect with you along with the investors, the pitchers, the judges, and we get to understand what exactly goes behind the scenes. What are they thinking? Why do they choose to go for a deal? Why not? What's the missing piece? What was the magic key? I want you to be there so you can get all those answers. All you got to do is grab a premium membership at CashflowTribePitch.com. Sign up and hang up with us. It'll be right after this call. But before I do, I got to shout some people out for taking action. I got to shout out Frank Fozo, Alexander Usu, Jamie, and David Tukak. Just a few people who are taking action, grabbing a membership. Go ahead and grab a membership. I am doing a draw for those who sign up on live, uh, live on the show. I will be putting you in a draw for 100 bucks cash sent to your doorstep so you can invest further into yourself. Okay, guys, listen, Matt, Ben, Mike, we heard the pitch from Harvinder. So here we go. I want to, you know what? I'm going to give the guest the first rights to this. Mike Rosehart, I want you to take the floor. Go away and ask your questions and your thoughts on this deal. Yeah. So I like the pitch. I like that you focused on the potential ROI that's there with that fourth unit up. I really like that you came across with uh, some of the potential for the property. You sold the potential. I think one weakness potentially for this deal. And again, I'm not an expert in this area, so I can't pretend that, that I know exactly what the, the market cap rates are. But to me, a small town like that seems like it might have a little better than a, a five and change cap rate. So that's something that you know I'd be looking into, kind of curious why the cap rate was a little bit low. Currently, obviously, rents are low and we're in a pandemic, so it's difficult to evict tenants in this time, right? So if you had told me that it was a vacant building or it had you know tenants agreeing to leave already and the cap rate was low, I'd be really focused on that future cap rate. But since it's so difficult in these times to you know, realize that uh, 11 forecast of cap rate, I think it can be a little bit difficult. Um, looking back at, at uh, the expenses you had there, it looked a little light to me um, in some of the expenses I was looking at there. I was wondering if you had maybe done some further analysis on that and thought through uh, some of the expenses there. Yes, so I got full details from the um, seller. I asked him to provide me like uh, his last six mm -hmm. month information, the bills and what he's paying, how much, like, uh, like what cash flow he's getting every month. Based on that, I, I came up with those numbers. So those are actual bills you're able to review each and every one yeah. to confirm the totals, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and he's willing to provide last six months uh, all the information, like what's the income, what the expenses were there and the bills and everything. Did you, did he have property management in place or any other line item expenses that one might occur if they were to take this deal on and they weren't local and managing it himself? Yes, so he's managing by himself and he's getting retired. He's moving to Ottawa. So, but I did find out two management company in the in the Pembroke. And if you take a deal from me, I will definitely provide you the information. Okay. One thing I'd like to see if I was looking at the numbers would be given that I'm from London, Ontario, and Pembroke's like. I don't know, five, six hours away or more. Uh, if I was going to be investing in the deal and I was going to take it down, I'd need the infrastructure there already in place. So one thing that would make the deal more attractive to someone like myself with capital would be coming in and saying, hey, I've already found a property manager who's toured the, the building and is willing to you know, take over managing this property. He's got a plan to realize this ROI with these you know, fourth unit you're going to add, et cetera, so forth. They've got a contractor lined up. Here's the quote that we got. And if you brought all that together and put that that together, you can even charge a higher wholesale fee, potentially, if the deal's strong enough, if all of those pieces are coming together. But without the infrastructure in that location, it'd be very difficult for me to, to buy that deal off you. I wouldn't have any uh, connection to any contractors, wouldn't have any idea what you know property managers in town and, and such. And being so far away, execution on a deal like this and realizing that you know lower cap rate and getting to the higher cap rate really does take um, expert level I think management in place. And so that's a, a big a value add you could kind of add to the deal. Yes, so I do have uh, property management information. It's two of them actually, not one. 
I also have a contractor who gave me estimate about the 30, 13,000 renovation. So I do have a contractor information and property management uh, managers there. So it's two of them. If you need it, I can definitely provide that. What was the scope of work for that fourth unit? Just curious. Sorry, what? What was the scope of work to add that fourth unit? So it has everything, uh, it's a, it will be a bachelor apartment. It has everything, plumbing and electrical, everything roughly done. You just need um, a washroom there and you need a kitchen there. That's it. So some walls, flooring, paint, a kitchen, uh, maybe electrical and as well as electrical. Cold water. Yeah, electrical, everything is roughly done there. As per it says in a presentation, the electrical, uh, plumbing, everything roughly done there. All you just need a kitchen and a washroom there. And of course, for that, the flooring too. Okay, that seems a little light, but maybe you've got a great contracting crew down there. In my experience, it's been putting a kitchen and a bathroom, uh, completely outsourced, starting to you know physically be there and GC the jobs. I've seen it run uh, sometimes 15, 20, 25, 30, uh, 35, depending on the scope of work that's there, if there's electrical need to be done as well, and some things to be brought to code around you know, fire fire separations and things like that. So to me, it seems a little light. Um, and the cap rate in where I'm at right now would be um, a little on the uh, on the low side from what I'd expect from a, a smaller area like that. Again, I'm not an expert, so maybe a five and a half cap as is is a really good deal in that area. I wish I, I had the market comparables. That would be something that, you know, if you had that in presentation, that would be very helpful to say, hey, here's like the 10 properties that have sold in this area, and here are the cap rates they're selling at, and here are the market rents. Because I just, without seeing what market rents could be, without seeing a detailed presentation on the pictures of each condition of every unit, it's hard for me to know when you tell me the rent's 950, market rent's 950, I have to take your word for it. Without any comparables, I don't know if that's true or not. I just don't know what the, you know, there's just a lot of unknowns right now for me. So it's very hard to make a, a good firm offer with so many unknowns. Mike, I appreciate the, the the thoughts here, Harvinder. I just want to give some opportunities for, I want to go ahead and hear from Matt. Matt, I, I, I hope you have some questions, some insight. We want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this pitch? Yeah, sure. So if we could maybe bring up the numbers again, I think Mike hit upon a lot of the same things for myself. So Definitely having comparables would be nice just to kind of see where our 265 lands with compared to the rest of the market, especially in a smaller market like Pembroke, where I don't know how many transactions occur in the multifamily space. Um, and then definitely property management expense is one thing that stood out to me here. So I would guess that we're probably going to end up spending five to 10% of our gross income on property management, right? So when I run my numbers, I usually do like to err on the side of 10% and include like landscaping and snow removal as that 10%. So in that case, you know, our as is cash flow gets cut in about half because that'd be about $200 a month expense. So uh, that's something that just kind of stands out. And the $13,000 renovation sounds tight. Um, I guess the biggest thing would be, is it already legally zoned for a fourplex? And that's all kosher with the city and it's literally plug and play and all that because Again, the moment we have to do anything there, I think we're going to see an expense uh, scope creep. And then finally, the last one, and I understand that a lot of investors are getting very cheap money, but when I run my numbers, I always like to do it at, at a minimum a 3.5% interest rate, where I see you've got a 2% interest rate on a 30-year amortization as the mortgage here. So again, if I was to tweak that to the way I normally calculate my numbers, we'd actually end up underwater here as far as cash flow goes. So Again, I definitely see the potential and even without really knowing Pembroke fully, I, I do believe that like the market rents, you're probably saying just it feels right, even not even knowing the market, but just knowing what minimum wages in this province and things of that nature. So that doesn't necessarily sound too far off for me. But then the biggest question is how easy is it going to be to generate that tenant turnover, right? Have we pre-negotiated any opportunities there? Um, so I think those are probably the biggest things that stand out to me about this deal. Okay, thank you for feedback, Matt. Um, yes, I have, um, for the comps, the reason I did not bring the comps over there, I checked in last around eight months, it's no triplex sold, but it's a duplex were sold, few of them. So it's a triplex potential fourplex. So duplex doesn't, it's, it doesn't call it a proper comp or comparables. If I compare a, a triplex or fourplex with duplex, right? So duplex were sold somewhere 220 to 230 there. 
So that is why I did not put the accounts. Based on that, I evaluate the deal is, right? And I spoke to like three to four realtors in Penbrook and asked them. So they all gave me this feedback that uh, at this moment, the duplexes are sold in last one year. We were checking eight months to one year uh, was that price, uh, but no triplex. That's why I did not add those comps here. But thank you for feedback. Come on, Ben, we got to hear from you. Give us the, the lowdown. All right, let's get into this real quick. So Harvinder, thanks for making the pitch. I know it's not easy. Uh, really good to see you. Couple quick shout outs. I've actually got a back stream going. You know, today's competition, I'm giving about $200 whoever gets the most, most likes and views on this thing. So Cindy, Ron, everybody's here in the party room as we watch this together. Okay, Harvinder, I'm gonna put you in the hot seat. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, let's go you and I in the hot seat. Number one, I'm an investor bringing cash to the table. Why on earth would you think I want to flip a property to make a 20% return? Or why would I want 5% return to put money into a deal? It's 20%, 27% because I heard that most of the investor wants somewhere 25 to 30. And in the past, my experience with the wholesaling deal, when I bring something, they have 25 to 30 in somewhere in between return. Um, they take it. So based on that, I I brought this deal because it says okay. seven. Okay, so I'll accept that answer. I think that's okay. I think the biggest thing, guys, if we're having a lesson here, is who are you pitching to? I have no desire to go to Pembroke. I can't even spell Pembroke. I, I have no desire to go up there and figure out this property if things go bad. I think where I would start, one of my challenges, what's the fair market value of this thing? I get the ARV and all that stuff, but what's the actual current fair market value? Do we know? Yes, we do. So fair, as I mentioned, it was no comps based on that. When I, I did the search and spoke to realtors, fair market value is somewhere. The realtor gave me is 295 to 299 there. Okay, good. You so you just said fair market values, no comps. I spoke with the realtor. I'm a believer of trust, verify. And the more that you can help me verify, the more that I can trust that the numbers are accurate. What I'm missing here is data. I'm getting uh, opinions, I'm getting realtors. I don't know who these agents are. The challenge I have is that the market overall has run up quite a bit all over Ontario and Canada as a whole. My local market, some of the properties have gone up almost twofold in the last three or four years. I'm a bear. You can tell by the color behind me, meaning I don't wanna be the guy holding the hot potato. So I'm a bear on most of these markets because if it comes the other way, I'm sitting here saying some realtor told me it was worth X, Y, Z. So could we not get comps? or we just didn't prepare them? I'm just curious. Um, actually, I did try to get the comps from the realtor. As I mentioned, it's right last one year, nothing was sold for triplexes. I can get for duplexes. Based on that, if uh, you want to evaluate your numbers, great, that comps, I can provide it. Uh, but right now for triplexes, nothing is available. And it, this one has a potential for fourplex too. Also basement, uh, also available if you want to make something non-confirming another unit, which can be a uh, uh, fiveplex. But we are not even counting basement because it's it has only six uh, six feet height. Gotcha. So it's a unique okay, property. Okay, so let's get productive here. Can you pull up the sheet real quick, Peter? And Matt, you can chime in on this or Mike. I'd love to get your feedback. I think here's where my mind goes, guys, real quick. If I don't know what the fair market value, the first question I'm going to say is, what's this wholesale fee? I wasn't clear at the beginning that you were selling me this deal. I thought you were trying to purchase this deal and trying to raise the capital. Are you indeed trying to sell it and obtain the wholesale fee? Or are you trying to buy this property? Well, I am right now. I'm trying to wholesale this deal. But if you want to JV with me, I'm open for that option too. Okay, so that would have been probably a different different approach here. So m without knowing fair market value, Mike and Matt, I go to what's the wholesale fee? Because now I'm trying to go get a deal because I don't actually know what this thing is worth. What do you guys think? That's where my mind goes on this. Yeah, I'm in the same place. Okay, wholesaling fee is 15000 Okay, cool. So really, we got this thing at 250 grand. We've got a hypothetical value of 290, $280,000. If I have the, if I have some kind of comps or some kind of verification there to justify that, then it's simply a numbers decision. Now it's got to be an emotional, instinctual kind of decision in a market that I think is rather over, overinflated. So the 5% cap thing, uh, it's, I'm the wrong investor for the 5% cap business because I'm an active lender. So I want to, I want to get my hands into something and there's got to be some meat on this bone. This one I'm wrestling with for that purpose. So I guess here's the question back to you. There's no real data. I don't know pen, whatever this city is. Sorry if you live there, my bad. Um, 
<laughs> how, how is somebody supposed to just jump into this and go, this is a great idea? Because my first thing is to be reluctant. Okay, so let me tell you. Uh, when uh, I put the number together and got all the data from the seller, I saw it's cash flowing 400K and it's 265 only at this moment, which is easy to afford based on the mortgage rates if these days out there. Most of the most investors, not you or Matt, of course, most of the investors are looking for some uh, deals which is under 300K, which is cash flowing or something. Based on that, this deal is amazing because it's under 300K, it's cash flowing 400, uh, 400 a month. And I find out the management team is charging $150. One is charging 150, one is charging 125. If you add the management team. So you're still cash flowing with around $200 a month with that. With investment with 265, it's uh, something coming in your pocket, especially new investors. It's just, I think it's a good deal. Would you allow me to give you some humble advice on this? Please. I, I would never use a cap rate on anything less than an actual multifamily. I think when we apply this metric to a, a residential type property, duplex, triplex, quad, you're not helping yourself. Because I'm looking at a five cap going, that's not an investment I want. Who the hell wants to make 5% return on their money and I have to take the risk of this market correcting in an area that I really don't understand. If it was in my own back market, I would still have the same problem. So I'd probably pull that right out of the presentation and only apply cap rate to something that's a business. This isn't a business. This is a, a duplex, single, triplex, non-conforming, conforming with the opportunity to do some rehab work and maybe make a 20% return on cash, assuming it's pro forma, meaning everything goes right. So I, I get stuck at the cap rate. So my humble advice is I would really pull that out of the equation because we're just adding more complexity to a deal that actually should be relatively simple. Okay. All right, guys, listen, we got about five minutes left. And so at this moment in time, we are going to have the final offers presented. And so I want to give the floor back to Mike. Mike, is there an offer that you would like to make to Harvinder at this time? Honestly, for, for this deal, I'm looking at deals in my own backyard here in London that have better cap rates than that. I've seen deals in Toronto um, actually recently in GTA area with a better cap rate than this. And I feel really strong about a market like Toronto long-term, whereas I don't know anything about Pembroke. It seems like a small town. So I'd expect a better cap rate if I was looking at a deal like this. It might be a good deal. If you're from Pembroke and you're looking for like a house hack, this might be cool. If someone wants to owner occupy that. Um, for a flip, it's definitely not meeting my numbers from a return on investing perspective. There's just not enough um, meat on the bone. So if I have to dispose of this asset, whenever I acquire any deal, I'm thinking about my exit strategies. Even if I love to hold the deal, I'm thinking, well, what if things go wrong? How do I get out? Where are my exit opportunities? And uh, for me, I just don't think that after you pay realtor fees, after you get involved in turning the building around, maybe there's some property management fees, some tenant placement fees, et cetera, so forth. I think it's not going to be that much cash flow. I think it'd be slightly underwater. And I'm not um, that excited about a deal in Pembroke where I'd be underwater at this time. So for me, it's not going to not going to work. But Maybe there's something, I'm trying to think, trying to be creative, trying to, you know, put some of my money out here. Maybe there's a way that you could find an investor who wanted to take this down was maybe they couldn't qualify for an a lender mortgage and maybe they could turn it around and maybe there are comparables and someone could find something, a triplex, you know, further away, maybe a few streets over or something that uh, is in the 300s, let's say. And if you had that information, you brought that to me and said, hey, I need a, you know, first mortgage. That might be something I'd be interested in, in funding, right? So if you had maybe, maybe you know someone who wants this deal. You said there's lots of people who are looking for the five cap rate. You know, they can lever up and, and they're happy to, to make a little bit on their money. Maybe they just need some financing help. So maybe that's a way I could provide some help. But uh, at this time, there are other opportunities in my, in my lap right now that from an equity position make more sense for me. All right. We are going to move to Matt McKeever. Matt, do you have an offer you wish to present to Harvinder? Yeah, I definitely appreciate you coming on today and pitching us. And uh, very similar to kind of Mike and my analysis, I think that until we get that tenant turnover or until we get the fourth unit up and running and just really firm on some of those details, um, this property is really just a buy and hold because from a flip perspective, in theory, it seems like there's potential there based upon what you're saying duplexes are selling for. But the fact that there has just been nothing transact in the last eight months to a year shows a certain illiquidity to that market, right? And just what's going on in general, because, you know, the last eight months to a year have been some of the hottest real estate we've seen. So um, the fact that nothing's been uh, shook loose there and then 
you know, finally getting a little bit more into some data around vacancies and things like that related to Pembroke. But uh, for this deal, I'm out. But again, I could see how it could work really well as a house hack, especially if someone moves into one of the units. Maybe they slowly move into all the different units and, uh, you know, fix it up one unit at a time while doing something else. All right, guys, we are down to the last, last, <laughs> last one. Ben, for the for those who don't know, Ben has been the saving grace for some of these last pitchers. And so, Ben, the floor is yours. Is there an opportunity to do a deal? Well, the good thing is there's always an opportunity. I think if we can align our vendor on what we're doing together in full transparency, that's the way I like to work with people. So this is what I would propose back to you. It has to be a win-win. The previous deal to me isn't a win-win. It's a win perhaps win down the road kind of thing if I have to deal with it. Here's what I need to know. The tenant that's in the property, you have a tenant there, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and they're looking to stay in that property, is that correct? Yes, they are all looking to stay in a the property. They are willing to renew their lease. Okay, wonderful. And are those, are those rents at fair market value or are they below right now based on that area? Uh, they're below market value rent. They are below market value. Okay, yes. cool. So is your primary objective just to wholesale and take the quick cash out of this thing and move on? Is that kind of what we're looking to do? That's what I was um, originally looking for. But I still also trust if you offer me a deal for JV or something like me money on reasonable rate, I, I can, I'm so confident about my deal. So um, therefore I can, I, I'm willing to close to on it or JV with you. But my main um, main target is to wholesale it and take the quick money out. I got you. Okay, great. So we can all take the quick money as long as I'm not the one holding the bag. Here's what I would say to you, just so uh, I make you an offer here, because I think there is some saving grace here. Here's how I would partner with you. Is money the issue? Is that why you're not closing on it yourself? Or is it just safer to wholesale it because the market's overflated and you're afraid that you're going to be holding the hot potato if you close on it? The money is the issue. Okay, great. So why don't I bring the 250 to the table, which is the actual purchase price here with no wholesale fee. We'll close on it together. Okay, I'll give you the money at 7% interest. We've wholesaled the property back to uh, a standard investor on the MLS once we've had a chance to look at the thing, if it needs a little bit of cleanup, dial up, whatever, but find a retail investor is willing to buy this thing at the five, six, seven cap. I'll take seven points of interest. We'll sell this thing. By my approximation, if we get 294 minus commissions, there'll be about a $25,000 spread. I'll take 30% of that, give you 70% of that. You'll make $17,850. I'll make the $7,600 plus the 7% interest for the six months or less that you may need it for. That to me would be more of a JV partner. It would give me a little bit of juice. I'd have the seven points that I'm not putting all of my capital at risk. And now we're sharing in the RIN. We're sharing in the loss. If it comes, that really is a JV partner. Are you interested in that deal? Okay, so let me understand. So you're saying you're going to give me 250 with 7% interest rate until we don't sell the property. And then when we sell the property, you take 30% off it. Correct. Yep, I'll take Deal. 30% of the proceeds and you take 70. Fair? Deal. Fair. I'll shake it because it's, it's going to pay me end of the day 17,000. I was looking for 15,000. I'll take the deal. Okay. And that's 7% okay. and that's for six months. Fair? Um, sure. If we sell it before six months and make the money, is that okay to uh, bake the counter before six months? Yeah. I mean, if you sell it before six months, just give me 9%. It's even better for me and you. <laughs> okay look at this interest rate increase in a minute great sure i have a deal i i love to oh. do the deal this one okay you've got a deal let's make it work thank you thank you ben ladies and gentlemen we have ourselves a deal harvinder i want to congratulate you for you hung in it you answered the questions you stayed right there throwing that pitch and you were able to strike a deal so congrats to you is there any last things that you want to say to the audience who is watching you do this deal no i just want to say to our audience guys come and pitch your deal it's a great investors are here they'll not only guide you how to do it and they can invest in your deal too as you can see they invested in my deal so yeah, come and join us. Why not? And thank you for giving me the opportunity, Ben, Matt, and Mike and Daniel. Thank you very much.
Yes, yes, that's awesome. It's so it's a it's a great pleasure. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you that this this pitch right here, it had its ups and downs, it had its questions, it's had its moments, but we are ending up leaving with an agreed upon deal. And if you want to know exactly what are the differences between Mike, between Matt, between Ben, what's a deal, what's not a deal, why I would want to do a deal, why I wouldn't want to do a deal, I need you to hang out with me, with Harvinder, with all the judges in the dugout so that we can connect, have a deeper conversation. Understand the heart behind the money so we can do more deals just like this. And so let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. I'm super excited to, to really bring on the next picture, but I got to hear from y'all. Come on, Dirty Burger. <laughs> Come on, man. I got to hear from y'all. Uh, congrats to Harvinder. That was awesome. And, and absolutely respect to the women of Tribe stepping up, making that pitch, man. We got to see more women in this realm. We got to see more people who are stepping up to the plate, taking massive action, and getting things Done. I love that. I love that. Okay, guys. All right, Mike, Ben, Matt, are you ready for the next picture? Because I'm about to bring them right to you. Okay, okay. Keep those comments coming. I got to see y'all. And let me know if you're joining in the dugout because I got to see you after this call. Oh, I also got to shout out a few people, man, for taking action. I got to shout out Maggie Spratt Malik. I got to shout out Adam Ayton. I got to shout out Bruce Willingstein. Oh, come on, guys, for signing up. I appreciate you guys. You are going to level up as a result of being a part of the 2,500 plus community investors. So for those who don't know, just grab an, um, a free membership at CashflowTribePitch.com. CashflowTribePitch.com. Grab a free membership. Did I say free? Yes, it is free 99. Grab a free membership and you will be able to hang out with us, connect with us on another level when it comes to real estate investing. Okay, guys, are y'all ready? I got to bring on the next man. Okay, he is born in Romania. He moved to Hamilton at 14 years old, attended Mohawk College as a mechanical engineer technologist. And after school, he focused on industrial fuel, fluid handling equipment and project management. He did sales and all of that for the past 15 years. And between then, he became a real estate investor for the last 10 years, doing it very passively. But now at this stage of the game, he's been operating as an active investor for over the last two years. He currently has six projects on the go and owns two long-term rentals. I need you to welcome Alexandru Mustatia. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm so glad to have you on. I'm absolutely excited. Guys in the comments, let me know. Do you foresee a deal happening? Do we say deal? No deal? Let me know. I want to know your anticipation for this pitch. Okay, Alexandru, this is how it's going to go down. We're going to give you five minutes uninterrupted for you to make your pitch. And after that, we will hear from our judges. Are you ready? Because you're going in three, two, one, go. Awesome. Gentlemen. Uh, thank you for that. If we can uh, cue the presentation. All right. So I, uh, I want to talk to you guys about renovation funds for a conversion project in basically the new Burr approach in Hamilton. Um, just a little bit of background on the city. This is my town. Uh, being that you, most of you guys are from Western, uh, Western Ontario, Hamilton is not part of the GTA. It has its own identity. It's an industrialized port city in the Golden Horseshoe, over half a million population, uh, very welcome into immigration. It is less than 30 minute drive for to access over 2 million jobs and only 45 minutes from Toronto. Now, it used to be known as Steel City because Telco and DeFasco would employ the majority of Hamiltonians. That was 15 years ago. That has changed. It's now, cater, it caters to uh, healthcare as well as education. We have five renowned institutions, McMaster like University, newly developed uh, Innovation Park with a heavy uh, emphasis on R&D and automotive, uh, Mohawk College that I've attended, technology, trades, apprenticeships, heavy emphasis on construction. Redeemer, Hellfield Strathallen as a renowned private school, Columbia International College as well. Healthcare, we have six hospitals. Hamilton General Hospital is actually known to be, I think, one of the largest, if not the absolute largest uh, hospital in Canada. McMaster, Dravinsky, St. Joseph's, all of them have heavy emphasis on research, cancer research. Um, and then manufacturing. Manufacturing still represents a considerable uh, uh, portion of the employment in Hamilton, steel, Stelco and the FASCO, National Steel Car, but also advanced manufacturers, Siemens, L3, Westcan, Suez. There's also an emphasis on water treatment, municipal projects, a lot of water treatment OEMs, 
are um, based out of Hamilton. So there is a considerable amount of uh, blue collar opportunities as well as institutional. So I just have a brief breakdown. Manufacturing, healthcare, retail, and education represent some of the, the largest employers in Hamilton. Now, uh, a little bit about myself and what I've done. Just a couple of recent projects. Um, high ROT flip, so return on time. This is a two and a half month flip from close to close, but in reality, it was literally about five weeks worth of renovations on a Hamilton Mountain um, flip, uh, lipstick flip, new kitchen, bathroom floor, paint, trim, and doors, $45,000 gross profit. That was completed back in October, 2020. My duplex conversion, and uh, I guess uh, Hamilton East Side. Uh, nope, we'll stick to that slide for a bit. <laughs> All right. Um, this is one that it's, it's, it's near and dear to my heart because I was heavily involved in completing the renovation top to bottom myself. With the exception of the electrical upgrade, I pretty much did everything in this conversion project as a duplex. So I just gave a, a brief breakdown on the numbers there. As I refied it, I guess what's not shown in there is that I bought it at 470. I put about $90,000 worth of out-of-pocket cost materials and a few trades. Um, but that was the refi, so it is cash flowing currently at about 400 bucks a month. And that is allowing for vacancy allowance as well as property management. So to talk about the deal, uh, next slide, please. Melvin Avenue, single family conversion project. It's a two phase project. So you guys are familiar with the garden suites that have taken off in Barrie. Hamilton is in the process of approving this bylaw. And I'm basically looking at the ideal project to be at the front, the, uh, at the uh, front end of this moving uh, movement. Uh, phase one duplex conversion to be completed in July, 2021. Basically it's a detached bungalow, five bedroom, currently with the finished basement. I'll have some shots of that. Uh, two bathroom, just over 900 square feet with a separate entrance. Now the appeal to me in this property was the detached garage, 460 square foot, as well as the uh, 130 foot frontage. So as you can see from the aerial view there, you probably fit six cars in that in front of that house legally with the existing driveway. So that to me is the perfect opportunity to duplex the existing dwelling as well as add the third unit in the garage. So we'll continue with the pictures here in the next slides. Oh, sorry, uh, location. Uh, so that's the, the, I guess the circle part on the right hand side of the graph of the, of the photos. Uh, so that just gives you an idea uh, where it is in proximity to the Red Hill and the QW with easy access to, to uh, Niagara Falls or Toronto. And then you can also take the Red Hill up to Lincoln Alexander to end up on the 403, be able to uh, go to Western Ontario, uh, Southwestern Ontario. The other property up from that thing right around the Red Hill is my current duplex uh, conversion. So that gives you an idea of my market rents are applicable based on what I actually currently own. Um, so, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So just to give you guys some shots of the current asset. Um, so that's living room, bathroom. It's actually, while it is original, it is in far better shape than many properties that I've looked at and I've, I've actually converted. Uh, the kitchen will obviously be redone. Bathroom, there's some, some things that can be used. That dining area, I'm planning on removing that wall, making it an open concept. It'll also allow for a spot to actually uh, mount uh, in-suite uh, laundry facilities, potentially under an island that I'm going to mount in uh, where that wall is. Next slide, please. That's the basement. It is a finished basement. It, it kills me to, to think that I'm going to have to gut this open because it's not done to code for a duplex, uh, but it is in very good condition. And it's interesting in that top right-hand picture, that door leads to the bathroom, but that bathroom was actually plumbed in and relatively well done in the cold room right under the front porch. So arguably, you could say that you've increased the usable space in that basement almost even larger than the upstairs floor because that bathroom, which is quite large, is housed in, uh, under the front porch in the cold room. Probably not well insulated. So again, I'm going to take the opportunity to do it right, but it, uh, it saves that space. Next slide, please. That's the garage I speak of. It is a garage at this point with a sliding garage door as well as a back man door. Uh, so the idea would be to uh, to actually retrofit this into a, um, a bachelor unit. I could. Uh, it, it does have hydro. It does have natural gas. Um, obviously, the, I have to bring it up to code and and retrofit that into with a man door and a, a horizontal window. 
Next slide, please. We'll give you an idea on the scope that I just discussed. So I'm going to be pulling permits. Actually, permit and drawings are already, the process is on the way. I've already had the designer lay out the, uh, the house, and I'm going to be uh, submitting the permits um, within the next few weeks. I'm going to upgrade the service to 200 amp, and then I'm going to take some guidance from the electrician, what makes most sense on how we're going to separate these three meters, uh, because we're probably going to high, uh, run a higher load on the garage and the upstairs floor than the downstairs. Uh, until these upgrades, modifications to the main um, layout, we may need to increase the, uh, the three quarter inch water line to up to one inch to service all three units. And then the duplex conversion is fairly typical, three bedroom, one bath upstairs. I'm gonna remove that wall that I had mentioned, new kitchen, bathroom, facelift, overall facelift. And then the lower would be a two bedroom, one bath, separate entrance, and I'll have to add an egress window to, to uh, comply with code. Now. Phase two, the garden suite, uh, city of Hamilton, Hamilton bylaw is still, uh, the approval is still pending. We are anticipated to be May, June to be actually approved, uh, at which point we'll set, we'll, we'll draw a new set of drawings and permits. Um, we'll have to, in, in the duplex conversion process, we will account for some of the tie-ins so that it makes it easy after the fact, but we will need to trench on the outside in order to be able to connect the third unit to the main dwelling. And then some additional mechanical and structural changes. Next slide. Um, that is. Yo, show us the money, man. Show us the money. This show is exactly the, the, the slide that I'm sure you're waiting to, to see. So uh, that's my entry point, 557. It was bought off market. Total acquisition cost with land transfer and everything else is uh, 571. I anticipate the duplex conversion is going to cost $120,000 and a lot of the infrastructure will be done in that money in the first phase. And then the additional work that I need to do to make the third unit will be an additional $50,000. So that's my total rehab cost of $180,000. Now, I plan on doing this within six to seven months. and I'm accounting for eight months here to the refi, also trying to get tenants in in the first two units. Um, so the like, holding costs are about $21,000. That's based on a traditional mortgage of the principal, 80% uh, loan to value, 2%, uh, property taxes, insurance. I'll, work, I'll walk through that, but I'm even uh, applying the cost of borrowing on the, the uh, initial down payment on that. So that's about twenty-one dollars to $22,000 holding costs. And if I were to flip it at that point, this is based on my data on the ARVs, based on a number of factors. Um, Barry has taken off and they had problems getting the ARV this high. I don't foresee having that problem. The problem, the reason why that was a problem in Barry is that they didn't have a lot of triplexes. We have a lot of triplexes in Hamilton and that data supports an evaluation of nine to 950 on the ARV of a legally done two, duplex with a garden suite. So that would be the basis of comparison, as well as the data generated from other cities. And I'm, I'm gonna use Barry as the example here. So the point is here, after the renovation, if I were to decide to flip it, there is a $110,000 potential profit. What I'm asking for is the total renovation uh, for 15% return uh, APR. Across eight months, that's $18,000. To give you an idea on the BRRRR strategy, the, the beauty of, of this particular project is that I'll be cash flowing just over a thousand bucks a month. And that's it. All right. That's awesome. Oh, Alex, appreciate the pitch. I hope you're ready, guys, because we're about to get right into it. But before we do, I just want to highlight a few things. So, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, but here's the breakdown. Phase one, you have a single family home. You got off market. You want to convert to a legal duplex. And what you are looking for is to raise capital for renovations. And then phase two is to add a third unit as an auxiliary unit or a garden suite. So once phase one is complete and cash flowing. Is that right? Is that the general scope of this of this pitch? That is correct. Yes. Thank you. All, right, all right. All right. All right. OK, guys, I hope you're ready for our investors to dissect this deal because we're about to get right into it. We will be right back after these words from Cashflow Tribe.
All right, guys, welcome back to the pitch brought to you by Cashflow Tribe, Canada's number one real estate online community. And so I'm ready for this pitch to be dissected, but I got to shout out Andy. Is it? Oh, Paul Lupin for signing up, grabbing a membership with Cashflow Tribe. Got to shout you out. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, I am giving away a hundred bucks cash for everybody who signs up with the Cashflow Tribe account. All you got to do is go to cashflowtribepitch.com and grab an account. It is free, zero bucks to, to sign up. And we want you to engage with over 2,500 investors in Cashflow Tribe. If you're looking to get more knowledge, get more detailed training, access to courses, we have a premium membership available for you. You can also sign up for premium at cashflowtribepitch.com. And as a result, you can actually hang out with us in the dugout after we finish this pitch. And so, okay, Mike, Ben, Matt, it's time to dig deep, get our toes into this type of sand and see who's going to get a deal. And I want some discussion in this mug. Okay. So Matt, I need you to break it down. Let me hear your thoughts. Sure. Um, so definitely appreciate how thorough that was, Alex. There was a lot of information to uh, take on. I think the, just in general, the uh, duplex conversions obviously been very popular in Hamilton for like a decade plus now. So no doubt on that business model. Um, the garden suites definitely are going to gain a lot of popularity. And, um, you know, I've had Colby Marshall on the YouTube channel talking about what he's doing in Barry. So again, this looks very similar from a lot of, uh, a lot of number perspectives. So I guess the biggest question I have is just looking at that auxiliary unit renovation budget of 50,000. And so what does that all consist of? Like, are we having to run out like a new gas meter, new electrical panel, new furnace? Uh, no, yeah. So a lot of that will be completed on the first um, renovation phase one. So uh, to your point, actually right now it does have hydro, it does have natural gas. So that was appealing to me. Is it done to code and am I going to have to pull it out? Probably. Um, I'm going to be upgrading the electrical service to 200 amps and splitting it right from phase one. And I will install the panel as it makes sense in the garage right off the bat. Um, natural gas line, I will likely, it doesn't, I don't, sorry, it does not need to be, to my knowledge, and again, yes, the bylaw is still pending, but to my knowledge, it does not need to be separated, the natural gas. So it's going to stay as one meter. Um, will it need to be rerouted? Quite possibly. So I'm accounting for the, the trenching to accomplish that. Um, and then the water line is also going to get uh, done in, the, in phase one, because again, I would not want to have to come back and rip out anything in the basement where the water meter is. I'm going to want to address that right from, from the get go and tee it off on the opposite side of the house so that I can set myself up when I'm ready to dig on the outside and then do the plumbing that way. And very similarly with the, with the drain as well. Uh, interestingly enough, if we were to go back to the overhead shot, the main uh, stack is actually very close to the garage. So it is literally a 10, maybe 15 foot trench between the house and the garage to access the main stack. Now, uh, Matt, I'm, I'm going to let you finish, but uh, Matt, I see Mike, man, he's, he's scheming over there. I see you scheming, brother. Do you have some thoughts that you want to share in this conversation right now? Sure. Yeah, I mean, this is my bread and butter. Uh, duplex conversions were kind of how I made a lot of my start, you know, going back and figuring out when the secondary dwelling unit came out in London for the first time. They were really talking about allowing, like, I was turning semi bungalows into to duplexes. So I've, I've done this and I've done a, a well, I, I've inherited a property that had a garden suite, which I made more legal. Uh, so it's sort of non conforming, but I've been through rerunning sewer, rerunning the water, um, having it close to the garage is pretty sweet. I like this deal overall. It sounds pretty good. I don't know the Hamilton market very well. So if you had comparable properties on the uh, on the current value of this deal, like it's, I don't know if 557 is a great deal, but I'd love to see where it's at right now uh, relative to other houses in the market. If, if I could see the value today, that makes me more interested. I'm, uh, I'll am i be honest, I'm more interested in an equity piece than I am from a lending piece on this deal probably. I like, this is my bread and butter. So I like to be involved in these deals and I need to have enough uh, enough uh what do you call it the skin in the game to really be to really be excited about it so i i like the i like the business model i think it works well i liked your presentation it was really well done it was pretty thorough i liked you get a really good overview of hamilton of your own track record a little bit uh that was all nice to have going into this not knowing who you were at the start of the pitch so okay. well, well done overall 
Uh, if, if I can address the one point about it's, uh, so I, I, if I'm reading this correctly, you, you're curious on what the um, equity, uh, the saved equity going into the deal, the 557, you're questioning the fair market value. Um, yes. I can tell you, well, a number of things. For one thing, based on studying uh, sales data that I'm well below market value based on having made just recently multiple offers or having been involved in bidding wars on the market, and I stopped doing that, but not too long ago, I can tell you that I've been losing on much higher values on very similar homes, but the best part about it is that we've actually tested it. We got this on the contract. I put it out as a wholesale fee at 600. I've received numerous calls willing to pay more if I can extend the closing date. So at this point, I can tell you that fair market value on this property is between 625 and 650. Wow, that's pretty good. Question come on, for you. Come on. Uh, sorry, sorry, Mike. I apologize. I'm gonna let you finish, my man. But hold on. I see Ben Humble, CEO. Dude, come on, get in this game. Let me hear you. you. Know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't you. that interested until Mike Rosehart got interested, and I'm trying to figure out his intuition here. Uh, okay, a couple things real quick, dude. You lost me, man. I gotta be honest with you. I'm, I'm sitting here like, show me the money. I'm the kind of investor where, listen. I want to see the money. And if the money keeps me excited and awake, then I'm like, okay, let's go to the rest of this thing. But if for me going through a series of numbers, I trust that you know the numbers and that you're doing the due diligence. But I, was all, I would always recommend checking in with the audience. Hey, are you guys with me? Hey, Matt, do you want to do a deal like a duplex conversion? Are you interested? Matt says, sure, I would keep it going. I think it's really important when we're on the pitch to have alignment in that conversation so we're not having the disconnect between where we're trying to land and where the person's trying to land. If the first time you're asking for a yes is in the close, it's gonna be tough. So I need to make sure like we're, we're on the same thing here. Um, listen, I trust that you know your stuff, but it's almost oversold. I like that you know the market, I think that's great. Maybe Mike and Matt want more details than me. I just wanna get to the root of it and, and make, sure it's my, make sure it's working. You know, 557 purchase price, um, you know, you're looking for the rehab money. It's, it, it's not a bad deal. I think Mike is probably more, more inclined to do a deal like this but i would really stress the fact with everybody coming on the pitch like make sure that you're coming in hot you got to keep it keep it relevant keep it excited keep it short and to the point i think otherwise it's the tendency is people can get lost i'm only telling you from my own perspective because i used to spend three and a half hours trying to convince people to invest in windsor when everybody thought windsor was a crapshoot right like oh i'm not going down to windsor let me show you in five minutes why you should be in windsor do you need to see more information yes i do Keep going. No, I don't. I've oversold in the past. So my only piece of advice here outside of the deal is let's not oversell. To you, it's adequate information. To me, I'm getting lost in the data. Okay. Understood. Appreciate that. Okay, guys, come on. Let's keep this conversation going. Matt, I got to bring it back to you because I know that you had, you might have had a few more thoughts. I want to give you the floor to see if there's anything else you'd like to address. Uh, yeah. So what I think where I was headed with all that, I guess, Alex was, uh, you know, trying to s suss out th the feasibility of that rehab cost. So I'll just, for the sake of it, since we've moved past it, I'll just take your word for it, that that's a adequate assumption. Um, and then I guess for me, the bigger point here is like, I guess, I often talk to my team about the difference between like a repeatable business and a magic trick. And this is kind of a magic trick, taking a garage and converting it because how many deals like this are we going to come across in Hamilton that are going to fit this model? So like, I guess I personally would just kind of plant the seed that if you decide that you want to become like literally the garden suite expert in Hamilton and like, maybe you're going to start actually building, like get Terry on registered, build the back uh, uh, separate house, build it with a basement, with a plan to eventually duplex that with an eye towards the future. Like pretty much if you were gonna take Colby's uh, business model in Barry and look at replicating that here in Hamilton, that's definitely something that I'd be very interested in exploring. And again, I think I've got some interesting connections and relationships there that could really speed it up. But I think what I'd be looking for is a active business partner that wants to go from soup to nuts and just cover the entire gamut. So like get Terry on registered, really become the bylaw expert, all that minutia that I never want to deal with. 
All right, Rosehart, let me hear you. I know this is your bread and butter. Is there any other questions that you have? Come on, Ben, jump in on this as well. I want to hear your thoughts. Because I, I, we'll listen, what, I want to know is, what I want to know is what does Mike see? What, like, what does Mike see that I don't see in this deal? You got more experience with this. Mike, is there a deal here somewhere where maybe I could bring some capital and you bring some of your experience to this? Is there, is there enough here for both of us to do something on this or not really? That's up to Alex, I think, at the end of the day, if he wants to become an equity partner or not, I think that that plays in a lot. He's looking for 15% to raise the money for the renovation. Looks like, I, if I understand right, you've already closed on this deal, right? So you're sitting on a property with 80000 90000 in equity, less commissions to sell it? Uh, that is correct, yes. So that that's, you know, Ben, when I'm talking about what, what's attractive to us as, a, as an investor, he's already taken the deal down. He already has the yeah. property. He, he can close it right yeah. now and make 70, 80 grand. Um, one, like, just pro tip, um, in the sake of, like, just sharing what I've learned, in really hot markets, sometimes it can make sense to do a little instead of doing a lot and throw up on the market and let people take, you know, run with things. Like, maybe that, that garden suite might end up end up costing 80 or 90,000 when you're all said and done. You might get more bang for your buck doing a lean, you know, nanny suite conversion without going all the way, but just clean it up, make it nice. The basement's already finished there. Maybe you put a, a nanny suite that's not a legal duplex and you could list this thing from what I've seen in Hamilton, maybe in the low 700s and maybe get it. And I think you could be super lean on the rental and there's a ton of equity here. So I'm really excited about this deal because I think there's a, there's margin there. I think there's a good amount of equity that we, you know, as uh, sharks or dragons could get in there and, and make some money. So I think there's something there. I think You've got, sounds like you've got a good team because you've been doing this now. You have six, six projects you've taken down. So you've got the connections. You've got the contractors. You've been down this road. You're active in the last two years. You're the kind of person that I was, you know, five years ago. I was in the trenches, right? That's, that's the kind of person I look for when I'm investing in a deal. I'm looking more at the person than I am at the deal. But I think in this case, you got the deal and you got the person. So that's a good masterful combination. So that's what really attracted me, Alex, was that it sounded like you had a lot of potential there. I think with the right focus you could actually make more money in a shorter amount of time by doing less and so return on time is going to be really powerful and then actually your return on investment is going to be even more powerful too so Mike, now, I like I, that. Let me, hold on hold on ben hold on I'm let you finish, but alex let me hear you i gotta give the floor to you man i know you got some more golden nuggets you need to share come on let it loose yeah no i i definitely appreciate mike's point i do uh, want to address matt's point could we bring up the, the presentation again and, and go a little bit further uh, okay, let's go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Let's go to the next slide. All right. So here's where I'm at with uh, exactly what Matt has indicated. I'm aware that you guys are not a fan of one, and I know Ben's not a fan of two either. Um, the truth is, I hate I the number to... two. I yeah, hate the number I... two. You know this. <laughs> So the, uh, the actual truth is, is yes, I have secured funding for this deal to, to uh, uh, take the asset as well as uh, complete the renovation on my own. However, bringing you guys on it, one of you, you guys on this deal will allow me to not spend my renovation capital, but instead go out and hire a project manager. I'm looking at hiring a potential, a, uh, either a Moha College co-op or an, a, a new grad and use this particular, this first project as a uh, training for the new hire um, to allow myself to develop a plan for it. Yes, I know the structure is there. I'm not looking at training him as an architectural technician, a technologist or an engineer here. I'm looking at training him from the process of converting, doing the duplex conversion, and then adding the third unit. So this slide here will show you what a duplex and new auxiliary uh, suite conversion project would look like. And I'm budgeting $160,000 in this case for the third unit. Uh, now, at that point, the, the typical entry point for a home in Hamilton, I'm going to say on the market, that is right to be a duplex, which may also allow sufficient room in the backyard, is about six fifty. dollars So I'm buying at much higher price point, and I'm going to be uh, still spending much more in order to, to uh, basically build that new third unit. It does not include a... Uh, basement in this price uh, at 160 is my estimates, but basically it allows me to set a process in place to become the the triplex or duplex with a garden suite leader in Hamilton. Um, there's not enough. There's not as much meat on the bones for a flip, but 
the monthly cash flow is still there. If you look on the right hand side, on the Burr side, even at a million dollar evaluation, um, you will still uh, cash flow. You'll, you'll be leaving a lot more money in the deal. Yes. But that could be an opportunity. So the whole thing here with why I need this money is on the one hand to allow me to put that process in place, but also bring you guys on board uh, on future developments. And it also allows me to focus on buying more of these and doing multiples at the same time. So I like that. Let me jump in real quick. I like that. That's cool. But I, I like you. I don't know if I love this deal. Like, how do we do 10 of these? I'm looking at you going, you got this property. Mike says you got about 80 grand worth of equity in the deal already because you closed on it. How do we do that on a recurring basis? And then if you take that exit of doing the rehab, turning it into more of a business, I think just having the one-off deal, it's good. It's good as a low end thing, but I think like there's a bigger opportunity here, Alex, with what you know. I like you because you're a high detailed guy. Obviously, you know what you're talking about. I have a great degree of confidence just in the way you speak. You know your stuff. I guess my question to you is simple. To Mike's point, if you have all this equity, why not look at the return on time? Get out of this thing sooner. We probably could have already wholetailed this thing in this, in this show already. We could have put it on the market, probably got it sold. There's definitely somebody in the audience who would have paid for it. And like, go after the next deal. And if you don't get the price that you want on the MLS market, then go ahead and follow through with this. I just think you're selling yourself short because somebody else's value of time is different than yours. Somebody else may be willing to buy this as a retail property and keep it. And they may be willing to work for six months for free just to get it done. How do I know? Because I've done flips for four or five months. And if I actually look at my return on time, it would have been three bucks an hour. So I think there's enough other people where this is not a real estate play. It's only the time of value play. If somebody else is willing to work for free and pay a premium for the property today because the market in Hamilton is so hot, I would say, let them do the work. And when the market cools off, this can always be a plan B. What do you think, guys? Matt, Mike, what's your thought on this? Yeah. One thing when you were pitching that second deal, at first I understand what you're talking about. You said there was two deals and I now I understand it's two separate properties going on. They're not like two two side by side properties, they're two separate totally deals, right? Is that is that clear? I, uh, so that is an example that the, the last slide that I showed you and I talked about the numbers, that would be an example. So if I'm able to secure funding from you guys to do this deal, I would hire out and put processes in place so I can do that second scenario times 10. So put processes in place, hire people to be able to project manage, use this project as an example and training platform for my hires and as well as proving the model. So this is a low entry point with an existing structure that allows me to get it done quickly and then multiply from there as I get into the much tougher, much more involved, uh, you know, I'm buying a duplex and I'm going to add a brand new structure as the garden suite. And even on that end, there are ways to control that number. Um, you're, you can do foundations of the property aligns, allows, but you could also do a much lighter structures on pile. Look at C containers. There's a number of other options that I want to explore, and this allows me to basically hire and put those that those systems systems in, in place and make it into a business. One piece of feedback I'm just going to share: having been down trying to that trying to scale road and having done that, just as a piece of wisdom, I actually brought someone on. I've actually brought someone from Bench on before. I brought someone I had met on my YouTube channel on to take over a project managing, and uh, in in two cases of three, it went really poorly. Um, I had to actually end up spending more time myself working with them and training them. And then one of them ended up leaving. So investing a ton of time. And the other uh, situation, it just didn't go as well as I thought. So you might have a budget at 100 and it ends up ballooning at 150. So from a from my perspective, um, to see you step away and bring someone else in to run the deal, if I'm funding that, that makes me nervous, actually. Um, more so, especially because it's their first deal ever. It's your, your first time bringing someone on, right? So that would be all new systems. And then you'd have some new person from Mola College running this deal that I'm funding. Makes me a little bit more nervous than if you had said, uh, you know, I've, I've tried to outsource before and this is how it went. Okay, no, I uh, understood. Uh, I guess what, what I'm getting at is that it would be an opportunity to train them as we're going through this project as well as pursuing. So, yeah, it will be an opportunity for them to learn. Uh, are they going to be managing this whole, whole thing 100% coming fresh out of school? Hell no. 
Okay, boys, listen, this is about time we get to the final offer stage. So this has been a lot of discussion. Guys, in the comments, let me know where this is going. Do we smell a deal or do we smell a no deal? Let me know. So we're going to move here. I'm going to start with Matt. Matt, I need you to give us the lowdown. Are you into making an offer or are you out? Yeah, um, so definitely see potential here. Like I mentioned, there's... Uh, a bunch of guys that made a shit ton of money in Hamilton off the duplex conversion business model. So I've got no doubt that garden suites will be the next thing. Um, if you decide to really become like Mr. Garden Suites Hamilton, I'm definitely interested in exploring that, but uh, it's definitely not something that I can pitch on a quick uh, call like this. So I'm out at this current point. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Listen, uh, ben, I got to give you the floor before I go to Rose Hart. Guys, let me know what you feel. Ben, give us an offer. Do we have an offer or are you out? Dude, I, I, I'm going to talk to Rose Hart on this thing because I see he's still in the game. You know this business. Is there a joint venture deal? I'm probably not doing this thing alone, frankly. Uh, it's a little bit of a variable risk by bringing on a new person to train them. You know, I, I get nobody wants to mule it out and, and be the only one plugging in their hours, but you know, like this is the problem when we decide to do renovation, somebody has to mule it out. And if somebody's not over there on that property every day, all day, it's, it's going to be a bad return. But I want to hear where Mike's at. Maybe there's some JV stuff that we can do together on this. Mike, what are your thoughts, buddy? Yeah, I'm all over the place. I don't know. I'm in, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out, I'm hot, I'm cold. I don't know. I all through this. I really like yeah, you're the a, idea. You're a Katy Perry song, bro. You're a Katy Perry hey, song. Right yeah, now. seriously. Seems like. <laughs> why, why don't we try something? Alex, like, what do you think if Ben and I came in as 50-50 partners? We buy into this deal with you. And you have to put any more money out. We were able to buy it and take it all the way to close. We come up with a plan together that made the most sense from a return on investment perspective. And we take it to refinance. Maybe you maybe take us out. You want to hold this thing? You buy us out after. If you want to flip it, maybe we can flip it. What do you think, Ben? You want to, you want to see if that's a... I'd be, I'd be interested in something like that, Alex. I'm interested in equity, not, not really a 14% loan on the rehab uh, it's not really secured on anything. And if I put it on the property, my concern is going to be over. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. What what would you do on the equity side, Alex? Would you take on a partner equity wise? I'm open to it. Um, so, so sorry, you're saying the, financing the deal hundred percent. Let me Let understand. Me where you, Mike. Yeah. Where, where are you at right now? Like, so you just closed on this property. It, I saw on the numbers slide, I believe you had a mortgage on already. Is that kind of where you're at? Uh, that's, we're closing on it, uh, Tuesday actually. So those okay. are the numbers that have been approved for with a, uh, a money partner. Okay. So you already have a money partner on the Correct. deal. Correct. Okay. So are you guys sharing equity already? Yes, we are. Oh, so uh, hold on. Are we share? the side chick? Will we be the side chick here? Are we, are we a second mortgage? <laughs> uh, I, so ultimately that is what I came to, uh, to obtain here is uh, renovation funding for a deal that I already have. Okay. Got you. So, so for him, I mean, can we bump this guy? Who is it? Somebody we like? Somebody I like. In for a big chunk? Somebody you like. I mean, I, I like it too, but I also like being in the first position. If Mike's in the deal, I'm interested. Uh, how much, of, how much of the deal are they funding? Is it like uh, just a small downstroke or are they bring in a big amount? Uh, they're being a big amount, definitely a big amount, the entire purchase price and the renovations. So at this point, the renovations are a separate animal, but definitely the entire purchase price. Okay. So if they're bringing the rehab, are you just trying to source cheaper funds? Is that kind of the idea? No, I'm trying to use the funds that I have for the rehab to get a business going. Got you. So I think part of the challenge here is that we're trying to kill maybe a couple birds with the same stone, maybe even three or four birds. Um, you know, leverage is a good thing. My, my challenge with leverage is it's always better for me to be super transparent on the front end because through discovery, it may look like, you know, it, it could have been a little bit more direct on the, had I known it was a private first, my impression was it was already closed on as well. But had I known that there's a private first already in place, now I'm going to have to look at them and evaluate that potential. Because if the deal ever goes sour or sideways, I've got to know who that player in the game is, you know? I can if, secure if, those funds against a number of other properties. That's not... Hey, that's not so you want to, yeah, but that's still going to be uh, it's still going to be basically a loan. So you're not looking for equity partner. You're just looking essentially more for a debt partner. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think under those terms, I, there's probably not much I'm going to be able to do on, on just debt. If, if you, I guess if you pivot to equity and Mike's in, I could probably do something, but if it's just, if it's just on the debt side, 15 points is not that juicy to, uh, to take on the rehab risk and the time frame. 
I'm Mike. Uh, I'm on the equity play. So, so my offer, I'm willing to let Bang win on it with me. Um, I, I'd be interested to buy in 50%. I like this deal. Um, I haven't done due diligence on it, of course. I'd have to see comparables, but pending due diligence, I really like this deal. I think it's a good amount of equity right now. I think it's a play right now where you could do this for a maximum ROI and we could all you know, do very, very well in it. So I think Ben and I would be in a position where, I don't know if you have a mortgage already set up and you need the down payment and, and renovation or whether you need the whole entire amount. I think Ben and I could probably figure that out either way. Uh, we'd be interested in, I think, in an equity position. So I think the offer, if, if Ben's in with me, would be to go 50-50 on this deal. Um, so I, I'm, I'm on the equity position. So I, I'm not really interested on in the debt side. Uh-huh. All right. Well, yeah. the, the floor is yours. What is your decision? Uh, ultimately, I saw this as an opportunity to to prove the concept. So borrow the money at a reasonable rate and a reasonable rate of return to you guys, allowing me to to scale the model and put you guys in a very good position to buy into future projects or or have an equity split on future projects, fund future projects. Once once this is proven at a reasonable rate of return on the money that I'm I'd be borrowing. All right. So yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. But I, uh, yeah, go ahead, Danny. Do your thing. <laughs> All right, guys. Listen, Alex, the, the conversation, man, I would love for this conversation to continue into the dugout because I think there's so much that can, we can really unpack here because we're talking business models. We're talking lending. We're talking equity. We're talking scaling. There are so many things that we can really learn and understand in depth as we move toward the dugout. And so, Alex, this has been a fantastic pitch. Really, really love the detail and the aspect and the opportunity for us to learn as people sitting uh, on the proverbial wall to watch this conversation conversation. And so, Alex, before we head out into the dugout, I just wanted to give you one more opportunity to talk to the audience and give any uh, any words that you wish to share. Hey, uh, gentlemen, I appreciate the opportunity to, and I, I definitely appreciate the interest in this. Um, I, it's it's not something that, uh, that I can uh, proceed with, but I, I very much enjoy this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to bring out more deals uh, next time. All right, all right. Listen, we're about to move into the dugout, but I got to give our, our guest judges, or our judges and Mike uh, the opportunity just to share with the audience their thoughts. Mike, man, it's been a pleasure just having you on. Hopefully this is the first of many, but I want to give you the opportunity to share with everybody. What was your thoughts? How did you see these deals? What are some things that you want to give for everybody before we head on out of here? Put me on the spot here. Um, I, I think that the, the best thing you can do when you're coming on here to pitch is just be really well prepared. And just understand your market completely. Having comparables for your property is, you know, I think a table stakes. It's almost, you really need to have those available if you're bringing a deal um, to the show. That's something that if, if you're watching us right now, make sure you come knowing your market cold. Make sure you come with a plan to, if someone asks to do the deal with you, do you have a plan to execute? If, even if you're trying to wholesale it, come with that plan in place. And uh, it really is nice to come with those nice, good presentations full of all the available data. It's a, uh, it's interesting. We go to these rabbit holes, and it happens every time. And all these things happen where we we kind of get down into the weeds. But um, you know, that's that's the fun of it. And so, hopefully, uh, if anyone's watching this and they want to reach out to Ben or myself or Matt to to fund deals, we're all here, right? We're we're interested. We've got capital. If you've got the deal and you want to make it happen, I've had people reach out to me before a few days before closing, saying, "Hey, my financing just fell apart. I got a deal, hundred thousand under market value. Can you help me make it happen? I want to give you some equity." So those types of opportunities, we love those. Um, I'd love to see a deal where, you know, me, Matt, and Ben can come together on something or you know, me and Ben or wh- whoever uh, has available you know, capital. That'd be cool to, to get on something together. So I'm excited to, uh, to be on again sometime. Absolutely. Mike, you are the man. We got to have you back. But before we head on out, we do got one more minute. So I, I got to have Matt and Ben be quick. But is there anything you wish to share before we move to the dugout and continue the conversation? Uh, just another great episode. Always enjoy uh, getting the deals pitched to us. So looking forward to uh, the next set of pitchers on the next episode. That's awesome. Ben, come on. Give us a, give us some words before we head on out. Okay. You have to learn how to sell. I was excited about Alex because he's Romanian. I was hoping we'd break some cabbage rolls together, a little sour cream, you know, you know, like old school. Mike knows what I'm talking about with this stuff. But guys, listen, real estate equals sales. Life equals sales. Any kind of business equals sales. It's really important to know your audience. If you're talking to somebody like me, my attention span is that of a gnat, right? A gnat, like, I need to know if it's a freaking deal. And if it is, I'll move forward. 
Other people may be different on that side of things. So it's important to go, how much information do you need? What exactly do you need to make a decision on this? What do you need to know? I think as real estate investors, we look at the numbers so much and we forget about the sales. If we look at the numbers and we forget about the sales, we become a number. Now you're forcing me to get emotional about the deal. You're forcing me to think more than I need to. So I really, really suggest prepare that sale. Prepare the sales when he's showing. I think everybody needs an elevator pitch. Have your slides, have your elevator pitch and go, okay, I got two minutes. I'll do it in a minute and a half. And I know that sounds cheesy and salesy, but that is life. Mike, you want to touch on that? Yeah, I think that the best thing, if you're watching us right now and you're preparing for a pitch next week or you know, a future pitch in the show or even just talking to investors, start with something like, the best way that Alex could have started would have been, hey, I got a $640,000 deal here in Hamilton. I'm about to take down, closes on Tuesday. Uh, I, I got it for $560,000. I'm 90,000 above right now. I've actually got money partners lined up for this thing that are salivating, but I really want to work with the dragon. I wonder if one of you guys can help me build my business model that could really get me the next step. What information do you need to see to verify that this deal is good? Do you need to see comparables? Whatever. And then we'll ask, right? And you can bring those, have those slides there, have those slides ready. Um, for the first presentation, same thing. Start with, hey, I got a $300,000 triplex, could be a fourplex. It's got positive cash flow. You start with that right from the, the beginning. Hey, I got it for $250. I'm open to JV. I'm open to an opportunity to add some wholesale right. fee here where I can make a quick buck. That's a great way to start your pitch. And that gets the, like as the investor being pitched, I'm hooked right away. And then we can get into the open dialogue with the end of the slides and the details about how you got to market rent and comparables and all that. I love that. So you got to hook them and book them. One thing guys really quick on the pitch is to set the expectation. Hey, at the end of this pitch, it's going to do two things. I'm going to either give you a cash flow play or a quick cash out play. Which one is better for you? We got to remember the lenders, treat them like a customer. And I think if we do that, we're going to be able to set the expectation, be clear on what we want, don't pander, and be very intentional with language. I think a lot of investors, what happens is they, they're just filling the gaps with words and it creates complexity that doesn't need to be created. The simpler the deal to understand, the better. That's my perspective. It's always worked well for me. And I think for most of the judges here, make it simple, make it to the point. Uh, and we can make a quick decision on it. That's fantastic. Fantastic counsel. I love it. Mike, once again, thank you so much for being on. Looking forward to seeing you in the future. And for those who don't already know, we are going to the dugout. This is where we're going to hang out, dissect, break down, have a deeper conversation, get to the mindset, get to the tactical. Whatever you're looking for, we're going to dive right into it on Zoom after the show. So go ahead and grab a premium membership if you wish to do so. But before I head on out of here, I got to announce the winners because didn't I say that somebody was going to get a hundred bucks cash for taking action. And I'm also going to get 50 bucks for the person, or, or sorry, 50, 50 bucks for the person who took action first and a hundred for the winner. And so for the first person who took action, I got to give the award to Basil Elagory. That is, you are the winner. I hope I pronounced your last name right. If I didn't, my apologies, but I'm going to get that money to you anyway. And for the winner of the 100 bucks, I got to give it to John Ortiz. John Ortiz, if you're on the stream, you are the winner for the for the 100 bucks. And so congrats to you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for rocking out with us tonight. I want to thank all of you for your comments and engagement. I want to thank the guest investors. and our pitchers. I want to give a special thank you to Peter, the producer, for putting this all together. And until next time, hang out with us in the dugout on Zoom. Go ahead and get yourself a premium membership at cashflowtribepitch.com. Hey, real quick, real you. quick, real quick. On my own competition, bro, I need to give out $100 to Margaret Spence, Margaret Spence, and then another $100 to Tanya Blakely for sharing this out uh, during my competition. So look out for that. That e-transfer is coming. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, guys. Fantastic show. You get 100. You get 100. You get 100. You get 100. Come on, man. That's what we do at Cashflow Tribe, Canada's number one real estate community. I'll catch you guys later. Take care. Uh, my name is Alex Musatea. I joined the Cashflow Tribe uh, about a month and a half ago.
I do have a full-time job. I've, I've been doing real estate investments on my own for the better part of eight to 10 years. It has been very slow, you know, lone wolf mentality. I've only been in the um, real estate investment and, and business ownership uh, mindset for a few months now. So it was quite slow, uh, you know, meeting like-minded individuals that I can collaborate with uh, has been a, a nice change of pace. Cashflow Tribe has been some serious practitioner information that I was able to tap into, but I knew I needed to take it to a higher level. My name is Soham Gupta. I am with Cashflow Tribe since April of 2020. My life before I came into Cashflow Tribe, I was working my job and just paying my bills. I was just uh, getting by. One day while I was working uh, at uh, my work, uh, I work as a general laborer, picking a lot of heavy cases, and my knee started hurting really bad. And I was so upset about that work that I thought, man, what am I doing over here? And that really made me take the step, take the leap forward to do something about it and join Cashflow Tribe. Happy that I have a purpose now. I learned a lot about real estate investing. I have plans to implement on them and I think within the next uh, couple of months I would be making a lot of money compared to what I was working in. Uh, my name is Daniel LeBlanc and I joined Cashflow Tribe back in March. I was stuck, I couldn't go any further up. So when COVID happened, I was at home, I had no more work. I had one job finished before and I finished it and I couldn't take on more jobs because people were staying in the homes with kids and all that so we can't do work with people living in their homes. I've been doing investments since 2006, so I've, it's not my first rodeo. I've done two major failures where I had to lose everything and start again. Uh, it's very hard. So the whole world's crashing down financially, and you're know, just like you got to go another seven years before your credit get worked up again, so you can get the, the courage to go back forward and do your deals again. Since I found Cashflow Tribe, things are going back for the positive the way I love it. Because before that, I was like losing energy, losing focus for it. And the drive was gone, and then when I got Cashflow Tribe, they were talking about all these the strategies and all that stuff, and they're saying how possible it can be. It just boosted my spirit back up. I'm back on the game. I'm back finding that that life that I lost back when everything went wrong, right? Everybody wins. And if somebody's losing in one of my deals, I don't want to do a deal. I don't care if I win, I don't want it. I could make a million dollars on a deal. If I if I cannot have it, my partners to win on the deal as well, I don't want the deal. My name is Joshua Clow, and I joined uh, Cashflow Tribe back in March. Before I joined Cashflow Tribe, I like would go to these meetups, and it just nothing really changed. Like there was no accountability, which is one thing that's really core to Cashflow Tribe. And so, as soon as I had that, not only did you have like this intense sense of community where people actually connected with you all the time and were eager to do so and lend out a helping hand but you also had accountability. So like you felt like you had to kind of start taking some action. I came from like a pretty poor family. Both my parents were on ODSB and stuff like that. And I never really even took it in that I had a choice. I just kind of almost had this uh, sense of having like a vow of poverty on my life forever that like it's just the way it was, the way it always going to be. And when I started to invest in myself, that was what made the mind switch. And so I'm a big, big believer in the power of perspective and that that can change your whole world around you. This was a big investment for myself and my wife. I'm ready to go. I want to join council. I want to start doing deals this week and I want to start a business and just go full tilt uh, with nothing stopping me.
Hey, uh, Peter, the producer here. We're hanging out in the dugout. There's still 75 of you. Why don't you guys come on over to the dugout? As you can see, I'm sitting down. We're hanging out. We're having a good time. So if you guys aren't signed up to Cashflow Tribe right now, come sign up to Cashflow Tribe. Get your free membership. If you want to come hang out in the dugout, you do need a premium membership. But I don't know why 75 of you are still hanging out here in the live stream. There's deeper discussions being had. As you guys saw there, two of those deals today didn't go down, but there's deeper discussions being had between the investors and the pitchers today happening right now in the dugout. So you need to get your cash flow tribe premium. I'm hanging out in the dugout, if you can't see, just hanging out here with the boys, chewing some bubble gum and stuff like that. So come on over to the dugout. We're hanging out. We'll see you guys there.